Доброе утро, уважаемые. Good morning, dear colleagues in the board. Can you show my presentation, please? I think my presentation will be a little bit the same like previous one because the cervix cancer surgery is more or less standard despite all the bottlenecks and discussion. But the typical number of surgical treatment is limited. As you all know, the volume of surgical intervention, that's what Professor Rob spoke about, is defined by theoretical possibility of the invasion of the tumor in the tissues that surround the cervix cancer. But for lymphatic nodes, this possibility is almost zero for the one a1 stadium, but for 1A2, it's already 5% for the pelvic nodes. And then it grows exponentially, the frequency of the lesions in the lymph nodes. So if we have 1A1 stage, we just do the colonization or with the dissection of the cervix or, or cervix or extirpation of the uterus. And the lymph dissection is performed on all patients from 1A2 stage, stage and beyond. You heard today about the sentinel lymph node screening, but this is not a standard yet. And the evidence, it, it is the fourth stage of evidence-based ba medicine. That is why the standard in Russian is to the pelvic lymph dissection. That includes iliac, uh, uh, obturating and other lymphatic nodes. Some uh, some lymphatic types of dissection are done only if there is the metastasis in other organs. The primary cervix tumor and the pelvic lymphatic nodes are. Uh, they are surrounded by the parametrium which is a connective tissue. So with the first stage, the possibility of the lesions is 1% in this area, but from 1A2, it becomes 2%, and then it grows. When we perform the one-factor analysis, the possibility, the frequency of the lesions in parametrium provides for the eight time more possibility, the eight time higher risk of the lymphatic nodes lesions. And if we have lymphovascular invasion, it grows four times. The Fumovit, Mr. Fumovitz performed a multi-factor analysis. And we can see in this multi-factor analysis, the lymph, lymph nodes have lesions only if there are metastases in regional lymphatic nodes. Lymphovascular vascular invasion and the differentiations level were not shown in this multi-factor analysis. Now, the hope, Professor Hope showed us the studies that, sh that, sh that showed us that the patients with no metastasis in lip nodes, with the less than two tumors, two centimeter tumors, and depth of invasion no more than one centimeter, with no embryos, the risk of the parametrium lesions is almost zero. And that is why the dissection of parametrium will not do any good for the patient. It's just that we do the colonization or the dissection, or maybe extirpation of the uh, uterus or pelvic lymph dissection. So we are currently doing the second, two second stage studies and one third stage randomized studies to justify this point of view. How often do we, um, do we see lymphatic nodes in parametrium? We had three classical studies, quite old, from the previous century. From 60 to 80 percent of patients have lymph, lymph nodes in different parts of parametrium. The frequency of lesions in these lymph nodes grows when the stage grows, the stage grows, and their size of the tumor grows. But the most interesting is that the frequency of lesions in the medial part of parametrium that is closer to the cervix and the lateral that is closer to the pelvis side 
is the same. The frequency of metastasis in these two parts of parameter is the same. That's why when you perform the second type surgery, you can still preserve uh, lymph nodes with metastasis, in, even in those distant parts of parameter. So this is the second type, uh, the second type surgery. This is the slide of the pel pelvis slide. This is the third stage, third type. When you sort of move the parametrium from these walls of the pelvis, so this is schematic, of course. This is the front, front section. This is the parametrium fiber. So the second or B type is when you dissect the medial part to the level of the ure ureter. It's not even half of all the parametrium. When you perform the nerve preserve, nerve saving surgery, you dissect the upper part of parametrium, the upper third, I think, maybe a little bit more, because your main goal is to save the nerves in the lower third of the parametrium to provide uh, to preserve the functional results. And then this is C2 type. So this is the abdominal expanded tracheoectomy. You see the yellow, the yellow color is the margin of resection. This is the sample where it was cut from the uterus. And these lines is the volume of the tissue that is dissected during the second type of the surgery. This is the sample after this extended abdominal hysterectomy. So once again, the line is the section margin, the second type of surgery. And now, everything that is higher than the line, the yellow line, is a little bigger. It's the kind. It's what you cut off when you perform the nerve saving surgery. So, as the frequency of lesions in different parts of parametrium is the same, if you don't cut a little bit more, some lymph nodes with metastasis can still be present after surgery. So, how, may, ma, how much of the parametrium you actually dissect, and what does it influence? What difference does it give us? So you all know that the function, the dysfunction of the ureter and the bladder can harm the can harm the quality of life of the woman. But I think that the radiotherapy and its complications can disrupt the sexual function even more. So when we do this third or C2 type, we can avoid the radiotherapy if the tumor is more than four centimeters, if there is a lymphovascular invasion, and there is the invasion of more than one third of the stroma of the cervix. If you remember the randomized study, the radiotherapy has to be performed if there are at least two of these three factors of risks. In Russia, traditionally, we used the combined treatment of the cervix cancer, radiotherapy and the uh, surgery. In the other world, if the B, there is B1, 1B1 and 1B2 stage, there is no need to, prefer, to perform the combined therapy, just the surgery or radiotherapy. And according to the recommendations, the combination of these methods is highly is highly harmful, and you can't plan the combined treatment. This is the recommendation based on Landoni 1997 randomized study. You see 1B and 2A stage, almost 350 patients, one half surgery, one half radiotherapy, radical one. You can see that out of the surgical patients, two thirds had less than four centimeters, one third more than four centimeters. The surgically treated two patients, two thirds of them received the adjuvant therapy. 
And when we look at the long-term results, the five overall and non-recurrent survival and the frequency of recurrence, it was the same in those groups. Only the frequency of, of severe complication was different. It was higher significantly in the combined treatment group. So in the end, we decided that adding the radiotherapy to the surgery increase, three, increases the risk of complication three times. And if we compare uh, and the radical program twice, the first three lines in this table, which is a little big, the first three lines are three randomized studies of the Landoni. It compared the surgery, the first and second, and the second and third type. And more than half of patients receive it near adjuvant radiotherapy. And you see that the results after the non uh, the less radical surgery is from 80 to 85 percent. But look at the last, the bottom two lines, Hercule and Unger studies. They made their patients undergo the third type surgery with no neoadjuvant therapy, and the result is the same. This is the Hercule. 2009 study, half of the patient, 1B1, 25%, 1B2. The patients with a more than 5 centimeter tumor received neoadjuvant chemotherapy, chemotherapy, only 11% of the patients. And 20% had metastasis in lymph nodes, with, and the tumor differed in size. And now, now we see the 96% of five-year overall survival. And those who had metastasis and lymph nodes, 91%. Non-recurrent, 94%. This is the Unger study, 12, 2012. Patients of only one B stage, uh, 1B165 and 1B234%. And 14% had metastasis in lymph nodes. Only surgical treatment, the total dissection of the fiber, connective fiber in the pelvis in 1B1 gave the 96% of survival of 1B2, 87. Professor Haub said that the survival was 85% with chemotherapy neoadjuvant and adjuvant in one B2 stage. And nerve saving surgeries, nerve sparing surgeries. This is 1215 study by Sipul, Professor Sipul. Analysis of 21 studies published up to date on nerve sparing surgeries. The meta-analysis of these studies was not possible because this data was uncomparable. There was no control group. There were not enough patients in cases, less than 50 patients. Uh, no long-term results, no more than two or three years. And some of the studies were retrospective. Some had the uneven distribution of patients in sp of the tumor stage in the groups. And the results of treatment were influenced by the use of either neoadjuvant or adjuvant therapy. The adjuvant radiotherapy was almost 54%. And no standard surgical techniques for the nerve sparing and third type surgeries. We also did the meta-analysis before this study, but only on the possibility of performing and the functional results of these surgeries. But oncological result study, as far as it goes, this is the first study. And there are not enough evidence of oncological safety of nerve sparing surgery in the cervical cancer patient with large size tumors with negative forecast prognosis. And this surgery 
and they indicate for patients that have that cannot that do not have to receive neoadjuvant therapy, like no embola in lymph nodes and less than two centimeter size tumor. So what are the advantages? We want to spare something, to save something. I tell you, let's cut everything. So advantages. Third stage has advantage in, for large size tumors. This is being possible. This is possible because we of the innervation of the bladder and of the rectum. What you do in nerve sparing, the nerves and the dysfunction in this innervation is minimal. And the third stage gives the less risk of uh, the neoadjuvant radiotherapy. Because if we dissect the parametrium, there is still a very high risk of metastasis in lymph nodes. So if we do this operation, the surgery, we preserve the function of ovaries. Because when patients receive radiotherapy, they almost always receive the dysfunction of ovaries. We preserve the sexual function. And there are no delayed radiotherapy reaction in 90, more than 90% patient as usual. No risk of radio-induced tumors that are possible in the cervical cancer after 15 years of observation after radiotherapy. And the last argument is the possibility to perform the total, uh, the full-fledged radiotherapy if there is recurrence. So this adjuvant radiotherapy is not a standard for the patients with less than four centimeter tumor. And uh, if we fully dissect the parametrium, we will not have to put our patients to this type of adjuvant therapy. And radiotherapy is not an option if you want to preserve the fertility. And with larger tumors, only the abdominal expanded tracheoectomy of the third type is, the, is, is your only option to preserve fertility. The third type surgery have the clear advantage for the patients with radio-resistant tumor. But where there is low risk of parametrium lesions, we don't have to d d dissect all the, lymph no all the lymph nodes because the risk of their uh, being metastasis, they having metastasis is close to zero. The nerve sparing surgery and their role has not been fully defined yet. For this type of the procedures, we need to select the patients with the minimal indications for adjuvant radiotherapy. And now to announce the nine Eurasian oncogynecologist master uh, workshop in Chebaksari, August 13, 14, 2016. If somebody is interested, then all the information is on the www.yafo.info website. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Sergey? As we understood yesterday, there, is a, there are numerous opinions, and that is why Viktor Vasilievich is so wise. It all depends on the type of the surgery. If the surgery was an extended extirpation of the third time, then we don't use the radiotherapy if we have only the, the intermediate risk factors. For, for more radical surgery, 
we have to look for two out of three risk factors that were shown in this study. Only we have when we have metastasis. We can't take one patient group because this outer radical and total uh, parametrium dissection surgery in the small pelvis have been performed only have started to perform be performed only several years ago we are still at the stage of um, compiling material and we had one case after extended tracheotectomy of the third type when we had the resection margin the, the positive resection, the recurrence in the resection margin, and she received the radiotherapy, chemo radiotherapy, and and now she only receives chemotherapy because she has progression, and the previous therapy did not help. When the radical hysterectomy of the third type has been performed, there were no recurrence, but it's only four years of experience, so it's very early to say. There are not so many cases like that. One, Speaking about the recurrence in patients with more uh, less radical resection of the parametrium, then this material have been analyzed in the Lebedev, in the Mr. Lebedev work, and about seven, seventy-five percent of recurrence occurrences are localized in the parametrium. So in the part of the parametrium that we did not dis dissect, not resect, and that was not, and th that you did, did not use the neoadjuvant therapy on. We always used combined treatment. That is why even for 1B1 patients, we always recommended their radiotherapy, and they all underwent this. Thanks. Unfortunately, the question isn't asked into the microphone, so it can't be heard and interpreted. The answer is as follows for all the patients, well, different surgeons. Uh, do surgery in a different way, and that's thanks to Mr. Vasilich. So they um, go do things according to their philosophy. I will reply on our behalf, on behalf of myself and my colleague, for all the patients. So we do urgent study of our pelvis lymph nodes. If necessary, we do the uh, bottom dissection all on both sides. We ask the morphologist to check all the lymph nodes they find. Um, again, the speaker is not using the mic. She can't be interpreters. In general, uh, they give us between 20 and 40. If there's at least one metastasis, we do the uh, bottom uh, dissection, which is again urgently checked. If there's no metastasis, uh, we do till uh, the low mesenteric. Um, if uh, uh, there are metastases, then we go uh, further up, uh, up to the lumbar part. Uh, as for the nerve preserving uh, surgery, to my mind, we explain patients all the pros and uh, contras of a uh, uh, small uh, surgery and parametrum, uh, and uh, uh, then there's the high risk of adjuvant um, uh, radiotherapy. If the patient believes that the radiotherapy is okay for her, but then her pelvis organs shall be less uh, 
um, damaged by a surgery. Gradually, uh, this damage is leveled um, in a year, a year and a half. Um, the only thing they lose completely, uh, they, uh, they takes place the desensitization of um, uh, the blood, so they don't uh, uh, feel the um, call to urinate as they used to before the surgery. It doesn't mean that they have inconsistency, no. They just don't feel it the way they used to. Again, the speaker is not using the mic. Sorry, she can't be interpreted. Paraortic, nerve preserving, we don't do that. You can, again, she's not using the mic, sorry. The answer is, to my mind, no. Great presentation indeed. But considering your answers to the questions, how long does the surgery take, Sulayas? If they study 38 lymph nodes, it should take around two and a half hours. And have there been any complications during this surgery? Well, during the surgery, uh, for, well, sometimes we damage big veins and then we suture them, and that is um, okay. That's the intra. Uh, surgery complications, if that's what you're asking about. As for the duration of the surgery, after we remove the pelvis lymph nodes on one side, we uh, send them to urgent morphology right away, and it takes half an hour, 40 minutes, and uh, we get the answer on one side. Same happens with the second side. All the 20 lymph nodes uh, in half an hour, they manage to do it that fast. Yeah, on both sides, uh, uh, from two, 10 on one side and uh, 10 on the other side, or 15 one side, 15 the other side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning again, Konstantin. Summarizing the above mentioned, what's your opinion? Which type of surgery uh, is the best, the one that you're mentioning? Is, this an, uh, th that, uh, um, is it an expert level uh, surgery that only the experienced uh, surgeons do, and uh, that is possible to be done only in big centers, or is this the methodology that may be uh, used in uh, all over Russia, all over the country, in small clinics as well? I can't give you a s definite answer to this question, uh, because uh, the surgeon factor is very important, uh, especially in case of ovary cancer. It is being disputed. Uh, standardization of uh, cervical cancer. Uh, surgery, mm, you know, different surgeons have different experience, uh, and different. Uh, they take away different volume. It doesn't matter what you remove, it's important what you've left. Uh, if we talk about uh, the total uh, resection or removal of uh, perimetrum, I believe if uh, the morphology service and surgeons are ready and willing to do this operation because after the surgery, uh, the gistology, very uh, detailed histology is necessary to refuse the adjuvant um, radiotherapy afterwards. So if uh, they are willing to spend time, it means a lengthy surgery. One can do one surgery per day. You can't do more in one operation theater. Then in theory, this may be used all over the country. But considering the peculiarities of our country, I believe it's um, too early. It should be done in big uh, medical clinics so far, since there are also risks of uh, joint uh, radiotherapy. What if some surprises are uh, left, um, even at total parametrectomy? Say, gistology may still make you do the radiotherapy in much more severe conditions for the radiologist. Uh, well, the main problem are lymph cysts and the uh, speed of restoration of um, normal urination. That's it. Um, thank you. May I ask a small question? Valentin Yurievich, our morning session is dedicated to cervical cancer surgery. We are mainly talking about surgery at present. We witness transformation of um, 
classification of radical um, hysterectomy that takes place the standardization of uh, CC uh, surgery. And if we talk about uh, the standards of uh, uh, paramectomy of um, CC, they do the uh, resection of uh, uh, the anterior, posterior, and lateral uh, parametrum. We're talking about centimeters, about anatomical uh, landmarks. Um, Hence, I have a question uh, to you. What do you mean by total parametromectomy? Uh, the Divertri type um, operation. I don't mean the one including the removal of internal um, iliac uh, vessels, just the parametrum tissues um, on the level of the pelvis wall. The second question. Many are interested, I believe. Are there any special features of uh, uh, post-surgery follow-up of your patients? Uh, usually there's denervation of uh, certain pelvis organs. In particular, we install epitocystomas for our patients to, uh, because the restoration of our urination uh, well, it takes uh, four or six weeks uh, normally. In our case, it's nine weeks, but it always did restore completely. And we also have lymphorrhea, rather lengthy. Big volume in um, obese patients, it's um, maybe around two liters. Uh, but usually on the 10th day, we remove the drainage lately. Unfortunately, again, the uh, speaker is not using the mic. I really liked uh, this uh, presentation. This question is rather to you, not to Constantine. I really like the presentation. And if the presentation is good, it usually causes many uh, questions. Uh, I'm not trying to criticize you, believe me. I am the head um, of the department, same as uh, Victor. There are many people from the provinces here. I am also for uh, diverse methods and uh, diverse opinions. Uh, and I also want my uh, doctors uh, um, not to be obedient, but always to have own uh, opinions. But there exists the general clinical opinion. And in one clinic, there should be one single opinion. It's not like Morkov believes that um, one should remove 38 or 40. Uh, lymph nodes should be removed if you go uh, further, plus 10 more. And Viktor Vasilevich believes that it should not be done. Just uh, the actual things should be removed. Three or five uh, damaged lymph nodes, plus the lymph nodes at the level where you stop lymphadenectomy. So when you are answering, I do not quite understand. At present, you mentioned everything you've said, though there wasn't much uh, data of your own. It was the survey of other people's data mainly. What's your opinion? We know that they're very aggressive about uh, cervical cancer, um, uh, about cervical surgery. It should be done once, uh, not it shouldn't be repeated. So I do support the aggressiveness. Uh, just not all the surgeons are able to do that well. And if they can't do it that well, it's better not to try doing it. Uh, just uh, not to let uh, the patient move after the surgery. That's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Today, you have mentioned the data and the opinion of yours or of your clinic. It was my personal opinion that I mentioned. Again, the speaker is not using the mic.
говорит, сыты стаканом воды. А если остались какие-то принципы, или у нас уже ничего не осталось. И каждый из нас уже делает все, что хочет. Я думаю, что надо выступить Виктору Васильевичу, потому что клиника... I think, uh, of course, uh, the clinic consists of uh, professors and surgeons that uh, form the general opinion, but uh, each uh, person separately has the right to have a separate opinion. Victor is controlling us, but uh, and he decides whether we work correctly or not. Again, the speaker is not using the mic. Sorry, no interpretation is possible. In our business, there's a very fine boundary, and one should understand what uh, the boss should allow and uh, should not allow. Also, the boss is a normal thing. One uh, boss is more of an authority, of an official. The other is more of a, a doctor, and it's very difficult to conduct uh, research and to support each subordinate's creativity. I quite agree, since um, I'm the head of the department, I quite agree with Yelena, but I know the potential and uh, the talents of each employee, and uh, of course, always with uh, common discussions, I do let them have their own opinions. We always have an individual decision for each patient. Uh, we always have the clinical conference of the department, and uh, common decision is taken. Uh, there are 18 of us. We all have a uh, higher medical education, and uh, many have uh, scientific uh, science titles, and uh, we do discuss each case of uh, cervical cancer. The other point is that the uh, treating doctor, the doctor responsible for the patient when reporting provides his personal opinion about the volume of a surgery and the stages of surgery. That's his opinion. So, besides me, there are five more professors working in our department. Um, ten doctors of medical sciences are employed in our department. Uh, how can one person make a decision about the treatment of this or that patient? We always do it as a team. Moreover, uh, the famous professor Vladimir Kozachenko, who has 60 years experience uh, of working at the clinic, and the ordinator who uh, works for the first year have the same uh, rights when voting, when uh, presenting their points of uh, view. The other point is that having listened to everybody's opinions, the boss, that's me, summarizes and asks, does everybody agree with that? When everyone is silent, it means everybody agrees. And after the decision has been taken on any issue, not just the cervical cancer, it has to be obeyed. That's when I'm acting, if someone dares to disobey from the decision that was developed by the team, I may be very cruel. My colleagues are quite aware of that. Disregarding my kind heart, it's not my interest, it's the interest of the patient that I'm guarding. If there are complications, we also discuss that. And let me repeat, everyone has the right in, to express his opinion in our department. And then a team is making or taking the decision.